Hello and welcome to the Apache Kafka series new course on the Confluence Schema Registry and the REST proxy. My name is Stefan and I'll be your instructor for this class. So first, a course introduction so we can get started. What I want to talk about today is the need for a schema registry. You may be wondering, why do I even need this course? What am I going to learn? What, what problem is it solving? So let's start right away with the problem. Kafka takes bytes as an input and then publishes them as an output. Kafka does not perform any data verification. So from Kafka perspective, here's what's happening. We have a producer and it sends bytes to Kafka, a series of zeros and ones. And that's about it. It doesn't know if it's a string or an integer or if it's a JSON or whatever. It's just bytes. And then these bytes are redistributed to many applications and your applications are basically consumer groups. So from Kafka's perspective, it doesn't know what the data is. It just knows that it receives zeros and ones and it should transmit these zeros and ones to consumers downstream. So what if the producer that we saw before starts sending bad data? Or what if a field gets renamed? Or what if the data format changes from one day to another? Well, the consumers will break. And if your consumers break, then all your real-time capability is broken. We do not want that at all. Big companies such as Uber have experienced that sort of problems and really had trouble making up for it. So we need data in itself to be self-describable. We also need to be able to evolve data over time on the producer side without breaking the consumers downstream. So we need schemas and we need a schema registry. So now you may be asking me, what if the Kafka brokers were verifying the messages they receive? So instead of receiving zeros and ones, now they also read the zeros and ones and make sure the data received is correct. That's a good idea, but it would break what makes Kafka so good because Kafka doesn't parse or even read your data. So it doesn't consume any CPU resources analyzing what's happening. It takes the bytes as an input and it doesn't even get loaded into um, memory. It goes right away to the consumers and that's called zero copy. So Kafka will basically distribute bytes and that's what makes Kafka so good. And so as far as Kafka is concerned, Kafka doesn't even know if the data is an integer or a string. And so if you change that, if the Kafka brokers start verifying the data, you will lose in performance. And no one has modified the brokers to do that. But there's a solution. The schema registry has to be a separate components. Producers and consumers need to be able to talk to it. And the schema registry must be able to reject bad data. So there must be a common data format that must be agreed upon. And that data format has three characteristics. It needs to support schemas. It needs to support evolution. And it needs to be lightweight. So all these requirements, I'm just like, oh my God, what am I going to do? Well, for all the schema related problems, there is the conference schema registry. And that's what we'll learn in this course. And for all the data format problems, there is Apache Avro. And that's the data format. So hopefully this introduction, very, very short, really describes the need of a schema registry and a data format that really guarantees and fulfills all the constraints and all the problems that are just exposed. And throughout the course, we will learn about all these components, how to use them and how to make your pipelines more safe and better. All right. So I'm happy to have you on board. Welcome to the course. Let's get started.